on ClaytonHeritageTrailer.com. And today we'll be taking a look at, I'll show you how to install the B&W Gooseneck Turnover Ball Kit on our 1996 F350. This fifth wheel installation kit is designed to let you install your B&W Companion fifth wheel trailer hitches. The adapters are part number BWRVK3500 or part number BWRVK3400. The underbed design of this kit allows for full bed access and when you are ready, it's under five minutes to convert your empty truck bed into a fifth wheel hitch. We'll start off by unlocking our BMW hitch and installing our fifth wheel adapter. We have ours pre-assembled, but you can adjust the uprights here depending on your truck and trailer combination. At this point, the hitch is ready to attach to your trailer. There's a little clip here that you release, basically it's a safety pin. Then you swing the handle out and you can watch the jaws open. Now you're ready to back onto your trailer. Once you're secure on your trailer, you can reinstall the clip. And since this fifth wheel installation kit doubles as a gooseneck hitch, when you're not towing your fifth wheel, you can remove it. This frees up the hole to reinsert the hitch ball when you need it. Now we'll go ahead and show you how to install a custom underbed kit for the B&W Companion fifth wheel trailer hitches. To start our installation, we're going to want to cut a hole in our bed. Now our customer already had a hole from a previous gooseneck, they just wanted to upgrade. But to find the spot where we're going to be drilling, we want to measure from wheel well to wheel well and get a center spot. Then we'll mark that center and then measure 49 inches from our tailgate up, make another mark in the center, and then we can drill a pilot hole and come back with a four inch hole saw and cut our full hole. Our next step is gonna to be to remove a heat shield. And in our case, we don't have a heat shield, but your truck will have a heat shield located right here, just in front of your axle. So we're gonna remove four screws, then we're gonna replace the front screws back up there. Now we're gonna move on to our next step. We are now going to lower down our exhaust but we need to make sure to support it. So we're going to take our cam buckle strap. If you don't have one, you can find one of those here at eTrailer.com. We're going to put our strap loop into this opening here in our frame, and we'll run it over to the other side and put it in the same spot. And we'll come back, tighten it down, and we can remove our exhaust. To lower down our exhaust, we need to remove our isolators on each side. We're going to take some spray lubricant and spray down our hangers. This is just going to help that isolator slide off, make our jobs a lot easier. Now we can come back with a pry bar, pry against our hanger like this. With that isolator removed, we'll now move back to our isolator over here and take that one off as well. Just like that, our exhaust lowered down quite a bit. Now we have enough access to work under our bed. Now we can take a look at our cross members and determine which one is our front and our rear. We're gonna determine this by looking at our notches. Now the more shallow notch is gonna be our front cross member, and the one with the bigger notch is gonna be our rear cross member. We're gonna slide this one in first and then pull it back to where it's three inches behind our hole that we cut in the bed. And I just went ahead and put a R and an F on here for front and rear. It's just going to make it a lot easier to figure out which one goes where if we have to take it back out and move anything around. Our cross member is going to fit in there like this with the flat side facing up and our notches and holes facing the forward side of the truck. We're going to take our cross member like this and slide it through. If you need to make a clearance cut here, feel free to do so. You can use a uh, cutoff wheel or maybe 10 snips, just depending on how thick your pinch welds are. And that's just going to make it a lot easier to slide our cross member into place. So we're just going to slide it over to the other side. You might have to walk around the other side and get it pulled through to where our notches line up. We now have our cross member in position. You want to get that front hole center with the hole in our bed, and then we can slide it back onto the frame rails where those notches drop in on the inside. We can now take our cross member and slide it back like this, We'll do that on both sides. So we have our cross member slid into place. Now if it's tight on one side, you can take a pry bar and kind of push it into place. Now I'm gonna slide this as far back as it'll go. And that'll just give us some more room to work once we get our other cross member in there. We're now ready to slide in our front cross member. We want the flat side facing up and our notches and holes facing the rear of the truck. So we're gonna follow the same steps, slide it in through the opening. Just like so, we'll come over to the other side and pull it through completely. 
So we have our notches in place and our crossover turned up. Now we want this level and we want this kind of L shape to follow this cross member in our bed, just like this. And we can grab our center section and lift that up. And we wanted this cross member flush up against that cross beam in our bed, just so that it sits flush like this. Then we can kind of slide it over and try to get this hole centered with the bed. But really we'll have some adjustability once we get our actual turnover ball middle portion into the center. Now with an extra set of hands, we can lift our center section into place. We want to make sure we have the latching side on the driver's side. We just want to fit that center section into our hole in our bed. Kind of get it in position. Then we can just slide a bolt here on each side. That way it can support itself. Then we'll grab the center section, slide it up to our hitch. And now with our center section in place, we can slide bolts through each side, and then now it will support itself. On that hardware, we want to have a lock washer and a flat washer. So if you didn't do that when you put it in place, that's okay. As long as it can support itself, we can always come back and add the necessary hardware to our bolts. Now we'll get the rest of that hardware loosely installed. With all of our hardware loosely installed, we'll be able to move all this around. So we do want to go up above our truck and check in the bed just to make sure that this is centered with our hole. And if it's not, we can come back and make any adjustments needed. As you can see, it doesn't line up, so we're going to need to jump back underneath and just slide it back a few inches. Now we should feel this collar slot into our bed here, and then we can come back up and just double check. And then if you do want to move it, you can always take a pry bar and pry against it just to get it to slide around. You might have to try it a couple different angles. Now we can go underneath and hit it with a mallet and try to get it to slide back even more. With it centered, we can now jump back underneath and finish up our installation. Next, we are going to pop out our fuel and brake line clip right here. It's just a push pin that goes through our frame rail, so we can grab a turn panel tool and pull this out. You do want to be careful, since these are hard lines, that we don't bend or break these lines. It is going to be kind of hard to get under here, but if you just take your time and find a good angle, we should be able to pull out on that plastic clip and get it to pop out. You might have to push it through on the other side as well. I did have to switch to a pry bar just to give us a little bit more clearance. And as you can see, we got that loosened out of the way. So we can pull it down just like this. Now we'll have a little bit more access to our hole here. We're now ready to grab our side plates. You do want to make sure the narrow portion is facing towards the back of the truck and our stickers are facing up. We can now grab our hardware and add it to the sides here. This is the hardware we're going to use for the top of the side plate. We're going to stick this through, add our flat washer, lock washer, and hex nut on the back side. Just want to slide our hardware through the holes in our main bracket and get them lined up with the holes in our side plates. Once you get one bolt installed, it can support itself. And we can grab our other bolt and slide it through the other side. like so. We can now grab our hardware and add it to the inside. With our hardware started, we can now move over to the other side and repeat the same process. Now there is a couple variants with this kit. If your truck does not have overload springs, you're going to drill holes here and then add hardware through those holes. Now our truck does have overload springs, so we're going to take a one inch bolt and our spacer and slide it through this hole and it's going to go through the hole in our frame rail and then we'll come on the back side and add a nut. So we're going to add a flat washer and lock washer on this side, slide it through, add our spacer on the inside and add our nut on the back side. Now this part can be kind of tricky because it is hard to get everything aligned properly. I suggest lifting up on your bracket, sliding your bolt through, you might have to move it around a little bit just to get that bolt to go through the frame rail like that. Now we can go on the back side and add our nut. Here's where that bolt came through our frame rail and this is why we had to move our fuel lines. We're just going to lift up carefully on our fuel lines, pull the bolt out a little bit, then start the threads. You want to make sure not to get these cross threaded. And it might be kind of tough because you're going to be fighting the fuel lines to get this started. Just take your time. Now we can come back and tighten everything down. 
And we do have an option here if your truck does have overload springs, but you're worried about this nut and bolt damaging your fuel lines, you can drill out those holes on the other side, just like you would if you didn't have overload springs. Now again, this is optional. You can do this, all three, or just the outsides. We actually are gonna to wanna to come back and add another bolt here. We're gonna grab a half inch drill bit and drill out a hole in our frame. We do wanna to try to get it as far back as possible so we don't hit our shock mount. Now we can grab a smaller drill bit, drill this out and get a pilot hole started. You wanna make sure to do this on both sides. Before we get started with that pilot hole, I'm just gonna grab our half inch bit and get it marked. And this is just gonna keep our pilot hole drill bit from walking around. So we're gonna start out with a smaller drill bit. Now I am gonna do another size in between our first hole and our half inch. This is just gonna make it a lot easier when we come back to drill out our bigger hole. With all of our hardware fully installed and everything tightened down, we are now ready to come back and torque it down. Now our instructions tell us a certain sequence to torque everything down, but they actually don't show us the sequence. The sequence we're gonna wanna do is go from that corner to this corner, then down this side to this corner, then to this corner, then we'll come back to here, and then we'll get the center bolt, and then we'll repeat that on the outside of the frame rail. So we'll do that far bolt there, this back corner here, come back down this side to this one outside, and then right across back to the outside bolt. And it can be kind of tough to torque these down just because there isn't a lot of room to work, but just take your time. With all of our hardware torqued down, we're now ready to drill the holes for our safety chain loops. We want to use the holes furthest away from our center hitch. So we're going to be using these two on this side, and the outer two on the other side. We're gonna take our half inch drill bit and get it started. And then we'll come back with a smaller drill bit and draw a pilot hole. With our two holes drilled out here, we're gonna repeat that same process on the other side. Now we can come in with a file and just knock down any of these hard edges. those edges knocked down, you just want to hit it with some clear coat. Now we can let that dry for a few minutes. With our clear coat dry, we can grab our safety chains. With our, with our safety chain loops in, we can now go back underneath and add our hardware. We want to grab our spring, push it up like this with the big end facing towards our hitch. And we can grab our hex bolt provided and get that started. Add our spring to this side. Get that hex bolt started. Repeat that same process on the other side. We're gonna tighten these down until there's a quarter thread sticking out the bottom. Now our instructions tell us to do a quarter thread, but I like to leave a full thread just for a little bit more spring pressure to keep those from bouncing around. So we'll do just a little bit more, and just like that. Now we'll want to repeat the same process over on the other side. We're now ready to install our latching pin. We just want to push the end through that hole there. You might have to kind of maneuver it around to try to get it out into our out of our frame rail. We'll have to come to the other side and kind of move it around a little bit. Just like that. Now we want to pull it up to our latch here. And we'll have to reach around the back side and add our 
carriage bolt. We'll add our carriage bolt here. It is kind of tough because they had us put the safety chain loops in first. We should have enough room to work. We'll slide our carriage bolt through. Just kind of have to figure out whichever side works for you. We can push our locking pin over that carriage bolt, grab our nut, and add it there. I did find it easier just to remove those hex nuts and springs from our safety loops. Made it a lot easier to get in here and access our latch. We're going to come back with a 13 millimeter socket and tighten down our flange nut on the locking pin. That nice and tight, we can come back and reinstall the springs and nuts on our safety chain loop. With everything installed underneath, we're now ready to reinstall our exhaust and our heat shield in the reverse order, we took them apart. We're now ready to pull out our locking pin to drop our ball into place. So we can drop our ball into place and then close that locking pin. That's gonna complete our look and installation of the B&W Gooseneck Turnover Ball Kit on our 1996 F350.